Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of working with the live macro to create a kind of timed story. The time runs out, the story ends. So in this example right here, I'm using a bunch of different ideas I've covered in other videos, so I kind of encourage you to revisit it, even though I'm going to explain how most of these things work as part of this video. Let's start with story variables. So I have a passage over here that's not linked to anything else called story variables. This is incredibly important because it has a tag called startup. In Harlow, anything with the startup tag will be run before the starting passage. So if we want to set up some variables, that's a pretty good way to do that. So in this case, I've named it story variables. So it's a good pattern to get into is kind of put all your variables in things you would recognize if you looked at it. So in this case, I know looking at a passage called story variables, what's going to be inside is story variables. So I'm setting up counter to be zero, and then because this has a startup tag, it will be run before the starting passage. So counter as a story-wide variable will be set to zero. The other thing I'm doing is a little kind of clever use of the header tag. So the header tag, like the startup tag, has special meaning within Harlow. The header tag will be run before every passage. So startup will run before the starting passage, header before every passage. In this, I'm doing something a little bit clever here, which is to say, first I'm checking to see if counter is less than 10. If it is, I'm saying go ahead and run multiple loops based on time for one second. Then I'm increasing counter right here by one. So we're running one second at a time. If it ever gets over 10, we immediately stop. That's the use of the stop macro right here in combination with the live macro. And we're going to ending. So the story's gonna end, we're gonna immediately go to another passage right here. Now, the reason why I'm checking this right here is because this is going to be the header of every passage, which means as we move between passages, it's going to run again, and going to run again, and going to run again. And if it's ever over 10, I don't want the live macro to run. There's no reason for it to run once we're out of time. So this is kind of double checking that in case we attempt to move between passages when the timing changes. Now, because this is the header of every passage, it's going to continue to run. And because I'm using story write variables, the value is going to exist for the entire story, regardless of what passage we're in. As we move between different passages, this will be rerun, and we will be recounting and recounting and recounting until we, of course, run out of time. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So this is already start up right here to start, build, and play. So in the background is that counter. So we're going to explore, and then next, and then explore more, and yet even deeper in the cave, and then very shortly here, within seconds, the story will end. There it is, time right now. Now I could always, of course, show that timer because there's always that header running at the top, but I decided not to for this. Now let's say if we decided, hey, I'm gonna to attempt to go back even deeper into the cave right here. This will send us back a few seconds right here, which then once it recatches back up, there it goes, time ran out. So we, of course, could allow a player right here to continue to go back about as far as they could go. Um, and then it's always going to reset to whatever current variables were at that point. So we reset, reset, store more. And as the time catches back up, sends this time right now. And of course, we could get rid of undo and redo over here fairly easily. But at least as far as this example goes, this shows one way to approach that. If you wanted a story where once time runs out, they get sent to an end, this is one way you could approach that. Using right here, timing, so in particular using the live macro to repeat based on some time. This is one second. Keeping track of that time using a counter. Once the time has run out, right here, once it's greater than 10, so 11 seconds, we stop what we're doing and then go to ending, which just ends the story for the reader or player. Of course, the other thing we're doing is tying in two tags right here. This is in the header. And of course, I set up story variables over here using the startup tag. Thanks for watching.